I'm getting hungry after talking about these delicious foods. I'm going to make some late night snacks now. Hello everyone, welcome to Historically Accurate. In Chinese history, there were 12 united dynasties. In these dynasties, people had relatively stable lives and they were in a position to develop rich and unique food cultures. In this and future episodes, I will talk about the favorite foods of Chinese people in each period, starting from the ancient times, as well as the stories behind these foods. You will find that foods in these dynasties were completely different, as they were reflections of different characteristics of each dynasty. So without further ado, let's get started. Legend has it that in ancient times, the tribal leader Yan Emperor, also known as Shen Nong, personally tasted hundreds of different plants and discovered many kinds of crops and herbs. He invented Lei Si and taught everyone how to farm. He also made pottery so that people could cook food and make fermented food. People gradually moved from hunting and gathering society to agricultural society, and the variety of food they could eat increased greatly. It seems that Shen Nong single-handedly taught everyone all the skills needed for an agricultural society. Just like the superstar employee in your company who generated 70% of the company's revenue and eventually drove his or her manager out and became the manager himself or herself. After Yan Emperor, a person named Su Sha in the reign of Yellow Emperor invented the technique to get salt from boiling seawater allowing people to finally use salt to season their food. In the reign of Emperor Yao, there was a legendary immortal named Peng Zu who lived more than 800 years. His son, Xi Ding, was young but loved to catch fish by the sea. Fearing that his son would drown, Peng Zu didn't allow him to go to the beach. Once, Xi Ding secretly caught a big fish and gave it to his mother. At that time, his mother was stewing mutton. She hid the fish in the mutton and cooked it when Peng Zu was away. Xi Ding ate the fish after it was thoroughly cooked. After Peng Zu returned home and ate the mutton, he found that the mutton tasted much better than usual. So he asked his wife about it. His wife told him the truth. Peng Zu tried the same method again afterwards and found that the mutton did taste better. Henceforth, a new dish was invented, Yang Fang Cang Yu fish hidden in mutton cubes. The Chinese character describing this special delicious taste, Xian, is made up of the characters Yu means fish and Yang means sheep. Ikeda Kikune, a Japanese chemistry professor, classified unami as one of the five basic tastes in 1908, along with sour, sweet, bitter, and salty. Spicy is a pain sensation, not a taste. While xian means unami as a very important taste had been incorporated in Chinese cuisine for a very long time. The Xia dynasty is the first Chinese dynasty that evolved from a tribal alliance into a unified country. Its founder, Great Yu, gained great prestige for leading the tribes in the Yellow River Basin to jointly control the water. You can check out my video about ancient Chinese water conservancy projects, which talked about how Great Yu controlled the Yellow River. Water control allowed people to obtain a large amount of arable land and agriculture was vigorously developed. As the Xia dynasty expanded its territory, crops and livestock started to be exchanged in different areas, which improved both the variety and the quantity of food that were available to the people. At that time, ordinary people often cooked rice and millet and ate them with vegetables such as Chinese chives. While the ruling class enjoyed hunting on a larger scale, therefore many wild animals became the dishes on their dining tables. Great Yu had a female official named Yi Di. She had a lot of sticky rice at home. Yi Di forgot about the sticky rice since she was busy with official business. When she remembered to check it, the sticky rice had already become damp and fermented. Yidi found the fermented sticky rice and its soup very delicious, 
so she brought some to Gritu to taste. Later, Gritu discovered that too much of this drink could make people delirious. As a king, if he liked to drink this kind of stuff, it would definitely impair his ability to manage the kingdom. Therefore, he didn't reward Yi Di. This is the story of Yi Di making rice wine. In the Shang Dynasty, Oracle Bone Script appeared. Through the records of Oracle Bone Script and the unearthed artifacts, we found that the diet of the Shang Dynasty was quite different from that of the Xia Dynasty. Due to the emergence of classes, the polarization between the rich and the poor was reflected in the diet. Ordinary people and slaves ate two meals a day at 9 in the morning and 5 in the afternoon, while nobles had three meals a day and even a late night snack. People in the Shang Dynasty usually ate millet, soybeans, and other grains as their staple foods. They also ate rice and wheat, but not as staple foods. Their meat supply was bountiful. In addition to mutton, pork, beef, venison, rabbit, and bear meat, they could eat geese, quails, pigeons, chickens, and even elephants, rhinos, and turtles. A variety of food preparation methods were developed. Besides the usual steaming, boiling, and roasting, the Shang people also marinated and sun-dried their food for easy preservation. Chopsticks already appeared in the Shang Dynasty but were only used by people when they ate vegetables and meat. For rice and other grains, the Shang people still ate with hands. However, the Shang Dynasty is most famous for its drinking culture. The Shang people specialized in growing large quantities of millet to make millet wine because drinking was essential to the Shang people on many occasions and millet wine was in great demand. Archaeologists have found a large number of wine cups, jugs, jars, and other kinds of wine vessels of the Shang Dynasty. The Oracle Bone Scripts also mention a minister who was too sick to attend the worship ceremony because of excessive drinking. And the most ridiculous was King Zhou, the last king of the Shang Dynasty. He ordered people to dig a big pool and pour a large amount of alcohol into the pool so that he could drink as much as he wanted. He also hung all kinds of cooked meat next to the pool so that he could eat as much as he wanted. After that, he soaked in the alcohol pool every day to eat, drink, and have fun with his concubine. It can be said that King Joe's life was like that of Trevor Bainham, an Australian tycoon today. Later, the idiom alcohol pool and meat forest was used to describe extreme luxury. Finally, as predicted by Great Yu, King Zhou ignored state affairs because of drinking. He lived a lavish life but made his people miserable. In the end, the Shang Dynasty was overthrown by King Wu of Zhou. The Zhou Dynasty is the first unified feudal dynasty in China. Kings of Zhou infected their relatives and meritorious officials with land and allowed them to go these fiefs to establish their own states. Therefore, this dynasty also established strict hierarchy and etiquette among the ruling class. For example, there were particular rules about the use of the most important cooking vessel for worship ceremonies, Dian, large brown pot with three or four feet, and the types of food contained in it. The lowest ranking of the nobles, Shi, could only use one dian with suckling pig in it. Only on special occasions could Shi use three dian, which contained pork, fish, and cured bacon. Da Fu of the nobles could use five dian and cook lamb, pork, sliced meat, fish, and cured bacon in them. Princes and high ministers were allowed to use seven dian and cook beef and two advanced ingredients animal intestines and stomachs. Kings of Zhou could use nine din, and in addition to what princes and high ministers could cook, their din could also cook live fish and fresh bacon. Such strict rules may seem lame today, but this was how the ruling class show and affirmed their power. It's like when you buy yourself a strawberry cake, your wife must eat the top strawberry first. If you don't give it to her, she will say you don't love her. She can only reaffirm your love for her if you give her that strawberry. 
The most famous food of the Zhou royal family was Zhou Bazhen, Eight Treasures of Zhou. Zhou Bazhen included eight dishes served at the palace state banquet and was considered the top cuisine of the Zhou dynasty. So what were these eight dishes? Dish number one, Chun Ao. It was cooked rice mixed with meat sauce and drizzled with hot lard. Dish number two, Chun Mu. The younger brother of Chun Ao, it was made by simply replacing the cooked rice in Chun Ao with cooked melon. Dish number three, Pao Tun, and dish number four, Pao Yang, were also brothers. Suckling pigs and lambs were first gutted, then stuffed with red dates and coated with clay before roasted over a fire. After they were roasted, the clay were peeled off. They were then coated with a layer of rice flour paste, fried in oil, sliced, heated by hot water for three days and nights, and finally seasoned with sauce. The whole process was quite complicated. Dish number five, Dao Zhen. It was to select the tenderloins of cattle, sheep, pig, elk, and roe deer, pound them until they become a paste, and remove the fascia. The minced meat was then cooked and seasoned with sauce. Dish number six, Zi. This dish was relatively simple. It only required marinating thinly sliced fresh beef in millet wine for a day. People could eat the beef with meat sauce, vinegar, or plum sauce. This dish was quite precious since cattle were important livestock for farming in ancient times, and people were usually not allowed to eat beef. Dish number seven, ao. In this dish, meats of cattle, sheep, and elk were repeatedly pounded and the fascia was removed. The minced meat was then spread flat on a reed mat, sprinkled with ginger, cinnamon, and salt, and dried over low heat. The dried meat could be either fried with meat sauce in oil or eaten directly. The last dish, gan liao, it was to wrap a piece of dog liver with cold fat, coated with seasoning and roasted over a fire until it turned brown. The roasted liver was then cooked with rice and wolf fat to make thick congee. Well, that's it for today's episode. I'm getting hungry after talking about these delicious foods. I'm going to make some late night snacks now. In the future, I will continue to talk about foods of other dynasties. If you have any thoughts and suggestions, please leave your comments below. If you like my videos, please like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. See you next time.